hi everyone hope you're doing good welcome to the next video on my youtube channel my name is Saurabh Bharti Microsoft Dynamics 365 professional without further delay let's start uh, the today's topic uh, so today's topic is the continuation of our uh, in inventory valuation series which we are uh, we are talking about in the supply chain uh, so Today's topic is about one of the checkbox or the configuration which we would have seen on the item model group. So which is the fixed receipt price checkbox on the item model group. And as we know that item model group is a very critical configuration for any inventory valuation behavior in Dynamics 365. So we are going to talk about this today and why I have put the standard cost against this. Uh, we are going to talk about this. So if I talk about what it is, uh, fixed receipt price. So uh, in summary in the earlier version of AX uh, Microsoft Dynamics AX we did not have the standard cost uh, inventory valuation method and we had only weighted average fee for leaf for valuation method. So at that point of time to use the stand standard cost for any of the uh, product uh, you had uh, a one checkbox which was named as a standard cost and along with your weighted average fee for leaf for valuation method you used you used to enable uh, we used to enable that particular checkbox to achieve the standard cost valuation method but later on in the ax 2012 when this uh, standard cost uh, specifically the inventory valuation method was introduced as part of other valuation method uh, this particular checkbox was renamed as the fixed receipt price and uh, uh, and and this uh, kind of exactly behaves as a standard cost uh, uh, valuation method which we have in the system. So that's the history about it and that that's the logic uh, behind this particular checkbox and what it, it does what it does is that uh, it works based on the item cost price which you define on the release product in the managed cost and if your purchase price is different than the uh, cost price defined on the managed cost it posts the difference into the account which is called as fixed receipt pri uh, price re profit or the loss account depending on the value which we are specifying there uh, this particular checkbox you cannot use with the standard cost and the moving uh, average cost and it works i mean for that for this particular option to work with you need to have the uh, uh, price defined on your uh, release product Key points, uh, you need to set up a posting profile with fixed receipt price loss profit. It is similar to your purchase price variance in the standard cost or it is same as your inventory profit and loss account uh, in the inventory tab which we define it. Uh, you need to set up a cost price as I said, uh, it is very uh, critical for, for, for this particular valuation method or for this particular feature to work. At the time of uh, product uh, uh, receipt inventory is posted based on the price defined on the release product not based on the price defined on the purchase order and at the time of invoice the differential gets the variance gets posted to fix receipt price profit or loss account using the offset so uh, without further delay let's uh, see the uh, the demo in the system that how uh, this particular uh, uh, process works. So I'm going to share my screen uh, for Microsoft Dynamics 365. So this is my Dynamics screen and first let's look at the product which we have configured for this. So this is my product. If I go to inventory uh, item model group for this product and you can see the fixed price is enabled here and my valuation method is weighted average. So which means like this particular option can work along with your the FIFO, LIFO and the weighted average. It didn't work with the moving average and the standard cost. So this has been defined the first thing. And the second thing is that we have defined a default uh, uh, price here, the, the, the cost price on the product master itself. And also if I just go to item group, and look at the posting profile defined for this. So you see this fixed receipt, uh, price, profit, loss, and the offset. These accounts should be defined because this is where the variance is going to be posted. 
Now look at the purchase order which I have created here. So this is my purchase order for this. The price which I have put in the purchase order is 160. Now this 160 I have posted the product receipt. Now let's quickly look at the product receipt. Now it, since it is a weighted average valuation method normally on the item order group, my value on the inventory should be 160. But since we have enabled the fixed receipt price and the fixed receipt price on the product master is 100 it is going to post 100 only as an inventory value. So if I look at the voucher which, has, which it has posted, you can see the accruals got posted as 160 because that's true. My cost of material received is not 160, it is 100. And 60 is going to my uninvoiced account as of now. Uh, uh, but if I go and post my uh, invoice for this particular uh, purchase order, the 60 is going to be posted in my fixed receipt price profit or loss account which I am having on the uh, uh, on the posting profile defined for this item order group. So let's post this. Uh, so I'm going to enter some invoice number, description and then I can have the invoice date and then I can update the matching status for this and let's and i'm not changing the unit price here if you change it here so that updated whatever is the difference between this price and the price defined on the product master is going to be posted into your variance as a fixed receipt price profit or loss so i'm going to post this and uh, parallelly let's go to the product and also let's look at the inventory transaction it is having so if you see this is the product receipt which I have posted and this is having the one quantity. Now let's say once this invoice is posted, if I go and look at the invoice voucher, 60 should be posted into your variance. So now let's transfer the sub ledger into the ledger and let's look at my uh, the voucher. So now if you see the 60 is being posted uh, to your fixed price uh, uh, loss account, okay? Because 160 is my value at the purchase and 100 is the price, so 60 is the loss. Now let's say if it was 80 or 40 at the purchase and then 100 there, so it would have been 60 as a profit for me. So this is going to be debited here. Though my cost of uh, purchase material invoice shows the 160, but uh, Actually, it goes as a hundred because if I go and refresh my inventory transaction here, if you see the cost amount, it is showing me hundred. Now, if I go and check the transaction detail here, I can on the inventory, you see that system has posted. First, it has posted 160, but then system has posted a adjustment of 60 considering the fact that it has the fixed price, fixed receipt price defined on the product master. And it has made it has made that particular adjustment in the system. So now at this moment, if I'm going to uh, uh, issue the inventory using your, let's say, sales order, uh, system is not going to use uh, the 160 or any other valuation method which we have used. It is going to post the value uh, 100 because that is the price which is which has been defined there as a inventory value. Now, uh, one more thing which you may have in your mind that what if if I, let's say I have posted a sales order right now at a hundred value, it will get consumed the cost of goods sold for me. But what if if I go back to my product master and update the cost from hundred to 150? So how it is going to change, right? So if you will make the change on the product master immediately, it is not going to impact anything. But if you go back and uh, run your inventory uh, closer process or the recalculation process, it will consider that updated price and it is going to uh, it is going to post the adjustment based on the updated fixed receipt price which you have it here. Since uh, it is working in uh, connection with your weighted average FIFO LIFO, so your inventory uh, recalculation inventory closure process remains intact and it is also going to post the settlements and the adjustment which it posted uh, uh, with these valuation methods if required if there is a change in the inventory value okay now there might be a question that why uh, we should use the standard cost and this is also behaving similar to standard cost 
I think it's a old method which uh, Microsoft has not removed it. It is almost giving you the same result as a standard cost. Whereas the standard cost has a standard cost has got a more effective calculation and the valuation uh, valuation impact in the 65 across different areas. You can define the costing structure and other part other things in that using that valuation method. So yeah, uh, it might not be a very useful or you might not find the frequent use cases for this but it is good to know that uh, we have this checkbox and the behavior of this checkbox is similar to the standard cost which we have it okay that's it uh, uh, for this video hope this is going to help you out uh, and understanding the uh, inventory valuation uh, methods in d65 thank you for your time see you in the next one